Well, hello, scientists. It's Scientist Cynthia here. Welcome back to Chapter 2, Lesson 2. Today, we will start practicing your visualizing. Remember that we are investigating this question. Is there a pattern to the weather that we can use to make predictions? As meteorologists, we are trying to understand if patterns of weather might help us predict future weather. This could help us select the best island for the orangutan reserve. This book is about what numbers can tell us about the world, especially the weather. Understanding and organizing numbers can help us find patterns. So far in this unit, we've been looking at a lot of numbers, temperatures, measurements of precipitation, and data about orangutans. It's important for meteorologists to understand what different numbers mean and how to organize numbers so that they can look for patterns. Before reading, I want you to think about the things you already know. What do you agree or disagree with? As I read each of these sentences, you can give yourself a thumbs up or a thumbs down for agree or disagree, or feel free to write down your thinking. I am gonna write mine as I go. Here's the first sentence. The same number can mean different things. Second sentence, finding the highest number and the lowest number in a group of numbers can help you see a pattern. Sentence number three, there is no way to describe the weather for one month because it's going to be different every day. The fourth sentence, the weather in the month of May is the same everywhere. And the last sentence, if I know the temperature for each day in one month, I can use this information to predict future weather. Okay, hopefully you wrote all your agrees and disagrees down. Now, I want you to look very closely. This is an example of understanding numbers by visualizing what they mean. Look at this image. What does this mean? I bet you've already said it. This is the number two. Now let's read this sentence. My brother ate two sandwiches at lunch today. Notice the meaning has changed. Two now means the number of sandwiches my brother ate. Are you visualizing anything now? Again, notice the change of this number. In this sentence, it says, it's only two degrees Fahrenheit. Two now means the degrees Fahrenheit on a thermometer. When we read each sentence, you probably visualized or made a picture in your mind of what the number two meant. You might have pictured two tasty sandwiches, or when we read two degrees, maybe you pictured a thermometer or envisioned yourself bundled up in a big coat in a cold, snowy place. As we get ready to read this book, you are going to visualize what the numbers in the book mean and what they communicate about the world. For example, as I read, I can visualize what the different numbers mean. On the first page it says, when you first see a number, it can look just like lines on a page. But as you start to learn where different numbers come from and what they mean, they can help you learn more about the world. What do you think this number says about the world? I can see the page on the left and then that picture on the right. When I read 128 centimeters on page four, I was not sure what the number meant, but when I looked at page five, it helped me make a picture in my mind of what that means to me. When I think about 128 centimeters, I picture the height of someone smaller than an adult, but bigger than a preschool student. I also remember that orangutans are between 120 and 132 centimeters tall. So 128 centimeters is about the same height as an adult orangutan. Now, as I read, remember, you are gonna visualize what the numbers in the book mean and specifically what they communicate about the world. Our next video will be of our book and then we'll continue our lesson after that. See you then. 
Welcome back, scientists. Here is our book for today, Seeing the World Through Numbers, by Andrew Falk, illustrated by Jeffrey Ebler. Seeing the World Through Numbers. When you first see a number, it can look just like lines on a page. As you start to learn where different numbers come from and what they mean, they can help you learn more about the world. What do you think this number says about the world? And written on the notepad, it says, Liz, 128 centimeters. Sometimes you see a number by itself. That can tell you about one thing in the world. When numbers are put together like this in a line plot, they can tell you about patterns in the world. On the notepad it says, height of Mr. Vu's third grade class in centimeters. Notice all those X's on the left. What do you think these numbers say about the world? And that one X all the way on the right, what about that one? I bet you guessed whose height that is. Numbers can help us learn about things we can see. They can also help us learn about things we can feel. What do you think this number helps us learn about the world? It says 80 degrees with a capital F for Fahrenheit. What do you think the numbers in this line plot help us learn about the world? Do you notice a pattern? It says May daily high temperatures where I live in degrees Fahrenheit. And you can see all those X's and look how hard he's working taking the temperature every day. You can record the temperature every day for a month. If you make a line plot of all the temperatures, you can see the hottest and coldest temperatures plus everything in between. That's the range of temperatures for one month. You find the range by finding the highest number and the lowest number in a group of numbers. The May daily high temperatures where I live in degrees. And now notice at the bottom it says the range now, 77 degrees Fahrenheit to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature changed from day to day in May. Even so, the temperature stayed within a particular range from 77 degrees Fahrenheit to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. It was very warm every day in May. There were no cold days. Sometimes patterns in numbers can help us predict what the world would be like in the future. What if there were still one more day in May? What could you predict about the weather on that day? The temperatures in May were between 77 and 85 degrees. You can predict that the temperature on the last day in May would probably be between 77 and 85 degrees. It would probably be in the same range. Different places can have very different weather patterns. Let's say your cousin makes her own line plot of temperatures for the month of May. Your cousin lives far away. This line plot shows the temperatures in the place where your cousin lives. What do you notice about the numbers in her line plot? The title says May, da May Daily High Temperatures Where My Cousin Lives. And already look at those numbers. Look where all the X's are. When you look at both line plots together, what do they tell you about the May weather in these places? Which place would you go to if you wanted to be warmer in May? I know where I would go. Temperatures aren't the only numbers that tell us what it feels like outside. People use rain gauges to measure rainfall in millimeters. What do you think these numbers say about the world? How rainy was the month of May? On the notepad it says May daily rainfall in millimeters and then you can see all the days in May and all the millimeters for every single day. It's a lot of numbers. It's hard to think about 31 different numbers at the same time. One way to make sense of a group of numbers is to add them together. Adding up a group of numbers gives you the total. For example, you can add up all the daily rain numbers to get the total for the month. This number tells you how much rain fell during the entire month. And notice at the bottom they added the total 105 millimeters. Totals are easy to compare because the total is just one number. You can compare the total rainfall in one month to the total rainfall in a different month. You can also compare the totals from two different places. May total rainfall where I live, 105 millimeters. May total rainfall where my cousin lives, 
56 millimeters. When you stop and look, there are numbers all around you. What do these numbers tell you about the world? I want you to take a minute and look at both of these pages and visualize all the things that these numbers tell you about the world. Here is your glossary with our vocabulary for today. If you need any reminders, line plot, pattern, predict, range, a new word, temperature, and weather. The end, I will see you guys back at our next video for the rest of our lesson. Welcome back. Let's look back at page six and then look at the line plot together. It says here in the book, sometimes you see a number by itself. That can tell you about one thing in the world. When numbers are put together like this in a line plot, they can tell you about patterns in the world. The line plot here is organized in a way that helps me visualize the heights of people in this class. I can see that two students are 122 centimeters tall. When I compare that number to the height of the girl named Liz, who is 128 centimeters tall, I picture the two students who are shorter than Liz. This line plot also shows that someone is 170 centimeters tall. This number is much bigger than 128 centimeters. So I picture someone who is much taller than the girl. Visualizing different numbers on the line plot helps us better understand the line plot and the data it represents. If we look at the line plot for where the boy lives, are the temperatures similar for every day in May? Hopefully you said yes, because a pattern is something you observe to be similar over and over again. If we look at the line plot for where the uh, boy's cousin lives, are the temperatures similar for every day in May? One way to describe this temperature pattern is to give the range. We can say that the range of temperatures in May where the boy lives is 77 degrees to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. This describes the temperature pattern in May with the lowest and highest temperatures. The range of temperatures where the boy's cousin lives was 65 degrees Fahrenheit to 73 degrees Fahrenheit. This describes the temperature pattern in May at his cousin's house. Your big word for today is range. Range is the span between the lowest and highest numbers in a group. The range describes one kind of pattern that helps meteorologists make predictions about the weather. Here is our key concept to remember today. Temperature data for one month can be described as the range of daily high temperatures over a whole month. Now, the boy in the book recorded data about precipitation. The kind of precipitation he recorded was rainfall. Let's think back. Remember, the boy in the book recorded data about precipitation, specifically rainfall. But what does the data table tell us about rainfall in May? Notice, the boy did not use a line plot to organize his rainfall data. Instead, he kept a total for every day and then added them all up at the end. If we compare the rainfall data for the boy's location to the data for his cousin's location, we can see that there was more rain where the boy lives than where his cousin lives. By adding up all of the millimeters for every day and comparing the rainfall data for the boy and his cousin, we can see that there was more rain where the boy lives than where his cousin lives. Here is another key concept for today. Precipitation data for one month can be described as the total precipitation over the whole month. Using the total rainfall for the month, it, it makes it easier to compare the rainfall amounts. To compare the weather in different places, meteorologists, just like you, report the total rainfall for a month by adding up the daily rainfall and they use line plots to find the temperature range for a whole month. 
You guys did a great job today. Here is your lesson reflection with a few questions. Remember, you can write them down, you can draw your answers, you can talk to a neighbor, talk to a teddy bear, talk to a tree, any of those things. Here are your three questions. If you want to write them down, you can always pause the screen. Why do people put numbers together in line plots? How does a line plot help you understand temperature data? And why is it helpful to add up each day's precipitation and get a total for the month? That is it for our lesson today. I will see you all again in chapter two, lesson three.